Hello, how are you guys doing? Thank you so much for watching in. I'm super grateful that you are here. I'm at this place in Central Park in 5th Avenue by 59th Street. It's amazing in here. I know about this place when I used to work in F.E.O. Schwartz years ago. That's when it used to be in 5th Avenue and now they took it out. So I used to have like my quiet times in here and stuff. But it's amazing in here. I love nature. Well, um, today's message I'm going to talk about is overcoming the guilt of your sin. I want to share some things with you guys. If you ever felt embarrassed, shame, you wish you could turn back the past, what did I done, my life is over, please hurry up Y2K, let Y2K be today or whatever, you know. I mean, Jesus, can you just come already? I mean, oh, I don't want to live anymore. There's so many things that we go through when we when we blow it. You know, have we been there before? We blow it. And we blow it in many different ways. So many different ways you can blow it. It could be like um, maybe if you're married and you fell short in, um, with sin against your wife. And that could be hard or vice versa. Or maybe... Uh, you're a brother or sister and, and you started dating in the kingdom and then you get a breakup or the the big the big stinger maybe the the brother or sister you was dating uh, came from another church so you had like a long distance and then they moved where you at and then you guys broke up and then the embarrassment that you may feel how how the brother or sister is gonna view you you know, there's a lot of different things. Uh, what else? Maybe you're a brother and you went about things with a sister the wrong way and then, and, and eventually it, your discipler found out. You know, there's a lot of different things. And um, maybe you sent a rash message and you wish you could take that message back and you can't. There is just a lot. And I know for uh, a church leader too, that could be really tough. You're a church leader and, and unfortunately you blew it. And your church has to know about your sin. How embarrassing that could be, right? So if you've been there before guys, we could relate to anything I share, then you don't want to go anywhere. Watch this message. This message is going to help. Trust me. Why I'm sharing this? Because I've been there. I know how it feels. Many times I've blown it. Many times I felt embarrassed. Many times I felt shame. Many times I felt like, Lord, can you just come already? There's so many different things that I felt because I just wasn't being mindful. You know, when you go through a whole lot, sometimes you ain't gonna be mindful when you have a lot going on in your heart and your mind. And so the whole goal of this message is to help you move forward and how to overcome this guilt that you feel in your heart when you do sin or where you done something and you felt really embarrassed or maybe you didn't done anything but you just feel embarrassed because it, it has something to do with you you know like a relationship you know like maybe uh, you got cheated on or whatever there's so many different things you may not have to sin but you still feel embarrassed because it has something to do with you <laughs> so there's a lot <clears throat> uh, you know a lot of the things that I'm gonna talk about is things that I experience things that I have seen from other brothers and sisters experience and so I'm a student of this because I know how deep this can be so one thing I want to take a look at guys I want to share with you guys is there's two characters in the Bible that can relate and guess what these two characters in the Bible we love them deeply uh, we don't even like talk about their sin much because we love them and that's David and Paul David is a man of God and everyone loves him, you know? And um, so I want to show you a little something. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, I want to show you how strong this kind of embarrassment was on David and the shame that he felt so he could relate and how we could imitate and how we can go about moving forward. Um, David, he led Joab astray. So if you know Joab, Joab is one of David's messenger, one of his guys. So when, jo when David sinned against God by k 
committing adultery with Bathsheba. Do you remember that, right? <clears throat> Second Samuel um, 11. So David saw Bathsheba bathing. He sent one of his men. And so one of the things that you see here is David sent one of his men to find out about Bathsheba. And the, one of his men told David, this is Bathsheba, Uriah the Hittite's wife. And so he's just making a note. This is the wife, lay off. King, lay off. But no, they were like, okay, bring it to me. So you could just get an idea, the mind of that person that was, that was David's servant. And then when David slept with her, when David slept with Bathsheba, then he had Joab to go, you, go tell Uriah in a letter to go in the front lines where the fighting is fierce and then eventually kill him you know I mean that's what David told him but at first David was trying to like cover his traps by getting Uriah to be drunk or go home or whatever but he couldn't cover his traps so at the end he told Joab hear the letter and that Joab in his mind he could just get an idea of what Joab might be feeling wow my king the leader trying to get one of the uh, a righteous men a great servant to die. I don't understand. And Joel was just submissive. He was just following his leader. And then that's what he done. Uriah died. And that ended up leading Joab astray. And then later on, we see here in 2 Samuel chapter 12 that Nathan rebukes David. So that's another embarrassment. You just get rebuked. Your sin got exposed. And and you could just imagine how David felt in his heart like double-edged swords I mean two I mean not two double-edged swords or something like right in the heart I mean he felt that 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 is the worst feeling to have and I felt that before and I'm sure many of us felt that 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 the, the guilt the shame and and, and and it hurts a whole lot then we see here later on in 2 Samuel chapter 24 David told Joab, the same guy that he led astray, he told him to um, take a census. And, and David's motives was not right when he told him to go count the people, take the census. And when they are doing that, what is the result of David's sin? The result of David's sin, he was punished and 70,000 people in Israel died. Can you get a, you could get an idea how Joy must feel right now in this situation? Joy completely lost respect on David, so David leads Joab astray, and yes, he done something foolish. And then later on, that same Joab end up killing Absalom. People told him to lay off of Absalom, but Joab like nah. He ended up killing Absalom, plunging him, and so there is consequences of sin. So unfortunately, when you do sin. Yes, I know it's an embarrassment, it's a shame, you wish you could just turn back, but there are consequences of sin. And you know, Israel, and the thing is with David, guess what, not only do I know about his sin, and Nathan, but everyone in Israel know about David. Why? It's, it's, in, it's in a book, it's in Samuel, it's in Psalms, everybody knows about David, even the whole nation of Israel, but David, he just did not give up. He just kept going after God. And we also know about, about Paul, right? So Paul, he sent uh, Stephen, he issued him to die, you know, when they stoned St uh, Stephen to death. That was approved by Paul. Paul was a persecutor. This man, he's put a lot of people to prison. That was God's people to death, etc. So Jesus told Ananias, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Although it's, it's like, it's not like a punishment, but it's a discipline. But when you do sin, there are consequences that you may have to face. So one of the things that David and Paul had in common to be able to move forward, I want to show you two scriptures. In Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18, Isaiah let's go to Isaiah 43 verses 18 to be able to move forward when you blow it 
you got to do this. It says Isaiah 43 verse 18, forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. If we keep dwelling in your past, it's going to eat you alive. It's going to hurt you. It's going to overwhelm you. You're going to get anxiety. You're going to, you're going to feel so overwhelmed because you're just dwelling in the past. You just will not let go. And then with Paul, this is what he shared, and I'm sure that he was inspired by this scripture if he read that scripture, although it doesn't show. But in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13, it says here, this is Paul, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. How did Paul were able to move forward? The scripture, that was his convictions. His conviction is, is forget what is behind, but straining toward what lies ahead. If Paul was to just keep dwelling in the past, do you think we will have the New Testament the way it's written today? Do we think we will see all the letters in the New Testament that is written by Paul? No. Paul really worked really hard to not dwell in the past with all his faith. And I'm sure he, he fallen short with a, a guilty conscience. You know, he did share in his, in his uh, testimony in Acts chapter 9, in Acts 22 about what he done so yeah I'm sure he has those times where he has um, thought about the past but he had it to just move forward so the secrets to moving forward when you blow it is these two do not dwell in the past and strength over lies ahead what helped me to move forward when I blown it is four words this too shall pass that's what helped me out a lot. And I really believe it can help you. Time will heal, yes. And when you're blowing it, or you feel embarrassed, yes, the first week's gonna be hard, super hard, I'm not gonna lie. The second week starts slowly dying down. Then the third week, your head is up, and the fourth week is like it never happened. <laughs> you're able to move forward. And one thing I love about this church, this church right here, this church is quick to forgive and quick to forget. And when you're blowing it or sin against your brother or your sister and and you feel really bad at what you've done you know eventually this is what's gonna happen after a month this is gonna be forgotten but I think you know if you're a discipler and you discipling someone that blown it it's got to be easy with them because although you may be disappointed but the one who feels worse is the person that blown it hundreds of people has fallen away because they can't face their guilt hundreds of disciples so we can't prevent people from falling away when they blown it but we just got by being compassionate by being loving and being easy just gentle and, and yeah just forgive make them feel make them feel love you know so they can feel in their hearts like wow these people have mercy on me and stuff that's what we gotta do we gotta be merciful to our people if they blown in this kind of way First Peter chapter 4 talks about do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering although something strange is happening to you. Yes, I mean we are going to blow and we are going to suffer but even as a discipler, don't be surprised if one of your guys blow it. <laughs> I mean sin is so easily entangled. It comes in different ways but sin is sin at the end of the day, you know. So guys, this is what helps me and one of the biggest guilt that I had that I had to overcome is uh, my last words with my mother before she died. The last moments I had with my mother, I was angry at my mother for her being drowsy and, and not going to bed. And uh, cause my mom has fallen down the floor from being drowsy a few times when she overtakes her meds. And, and it was hard to just keep seeing my mom fall down and stuff. So that last day, me being angry at my mom, Knowing that when I came back and saw my mom dead, my, my mind just blew up. I felt so guilty. And I, so many things I, I wish I could just turn back the past. Many times I felt this way, not only with my moms, but even the church when I just was not using my head right. I went about things the wrong way because my heart led me astray. Jeremiah 17, 9 is really true. The heart is deceitful. So we got to put on our Haggai 1-7 hats 
and that's give careful thoughts to your ways and that's gonna protect you from blowing it. But at the end of the day, guys, don't give up. If you're blowing it, if you feel embarrassed, you feel the double-edged sword in your heart, don't, don't give up. Embrace yourself, endure. Yes, there may be a consequence. The consequences may, you may lose respect because David lost Job's the respect, you know? So yeah, you may lose the respect, but then you can get your name back. How you can get your name back? Endurance, time will heal. Keep seeking after God. I want to show you some scriptures that's going to be really helpful, guys. And when you feel guilty, guys, I'm not going to lie. You're going to feel like you can't eat. It's going to be hard for you to forgive yourself. You're going to feel this kind of way. And um, I want to show you how David felt. And I really believe that if you have this kind of heart when you're blowing it, then you're going to know that God has forgiven you. And uh, so take a look at Psalms 51. Take a look at Psalms 51. I want to show you David's heart. When he blown it against Bathsheba, this was his heart and how he felt. So Psalms chapter 51. I'm only going to read like a, a sum of the scripture, not the whole passage. Psalms 51 verse 1, it says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgression. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and, and justify when you judge. Verse 7. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequity. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Verse 17. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. So how David felt when he has blown it, he was broken about his sin. So the key thing is, guys, you need to be broken about your sin. When you've blown it, yes, be broken about it. It's normal. You should be broken about it. But then when you get open and you feel broken about your sin, this is what God's going to do when you do get open and when you're broken about your sin. In closing, let's take a look at Psalms 32. Psalms 32, verses 5. It says here, Then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my inequity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Keyword guilt. So how you overcome guilt, get broken about it, and believe that when you're broken about it, when you repent, believe that God has forgiven the guilt of your sin. So guys, I want you to do something. If you're watching this video today and you're embarrassed, you feel shame, you've done something foolish, do this. Do this right here. Just get broken about your sin. You messed up. Amen. I've been there. I can relate. Get broken about your sin. Believe that God has forgiven you when you do get open. And then when he has forgiven you, then you guys got to do this. Mark chapter 2 verses 11. This is Jesus. I tell you, get up, take up your mat, and go home. Take up your mat and go. That's all you got to do. And if we do that, that's how you move forward, guys. That's how I move forward. Not done a whole lot. Been there so many times. But what helped me to stay faithful today for over 10 years, this is what I've done. Pick up my map and just keep moving forward. Let's not be judgmental on anyone that blown it because, hey, I've blown it many times and I'm still here. So because you've blown it doesn't mean that you're less spiritual or you're not a quote quote strong brother or strong sister because you messed up no you just made a bad decision 
Just pick up your map, move forward, and God will be with you wherever you go. Amen on that. Comment, message me if you feel encouraged, if you have any questions, and um, yeah. So please don't forget to leave a like or love. Love you guys. Take care.